All right, so in this problem, I have x is equal to x divided by 3. So right here, I want to find the value of x. So for my solution, first start with x is equal to x over 3. Now I'm going to subtract x over 3 on both sides. So now I'll be left with x minus x over 3 is equal to 0. From here, I'm actually going to multiply both sides by 3. So 0 times 3 is simply 0. And 3 times x minus x over 3, well, I'm going to have to distribute this to all my terms. 3 times x is 3x. And negative x over 3 times 3, these two 3's cancel out, so I'll simply be, just be left with negative x. So I have 3x minus x equals 0. 3x minus x is 2x, so I have 2x equals 0. So to solve this, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. These two cancel out, and I'll be left with x is equal to 0 divided by 2, which is 0. So now the second method of actually solving this problem My original problem was x equals x over 3. So this time, instead of subtracting x over 3 on both sides, I'm simply just going to multiply both sides by 3. So now I have 3 times x is equal to x over 3 times 3. 3 times x is simply 3x. And x over 3 times 3, these two 3's cancel out, so I'll simply be left with x. And now, I'm going to divide both sides by x. Or sorry, I'm going to subtract both sides by x. So then these two cancel out, and I'll be left with 3x minus x is equal to 0. Well, 3x minus x is simply 2x. So I have 2x equals 0. And now if I divide both sides by 2, these two cancel out, I'll be left with x is equal to 0 divided by 2, which is 0. So that's the second method of solving this problem. So now to check. I had x is equal to x over 3. We know that x equals 0. So now I have 0 is equal to 0 over 3. Well, 0 divided by any number is equal to 0. So I have 0 equals 0. And because this is right, my solution is right. All right, so in this problem, I have 4 to the power of x is equal to 8. So I want to find the value of x. For my solution, First start with 4 to the power of x is equal to 8. And 4, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 2. And 8, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. So now if I replace 4 with 2 to the power of 2, and I, if I replace 8 with 2 to the power of 3, I get 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 3. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is simply equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 2 times x, which is two, simply 2x, which is equal to 2 to the power of 3. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 2x is equal to 3. So I have 2x is equal to 3. So I'm simply going to divide both sides by 2. These two cancel out. And I'll be left with x is equal to 3 over 2. So this is my answer. Now, there's actually a second method of solving this problem. So again, I first start with 4 to the power of x is equal to 8. But this time, I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 4 to the power of x is equal to log 8. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front. So this is going to equal b times log a. So in this case, for log 4 to the power of x, I can move x to the front. So that's going to equal x times log 4 which is equal to log 8. 
Now I can simply divide both sides by log 4. These two cancel out and I'll be left with x is equal to log 8 over log 4. Now remember 8 that's equal to 2 to the power of 3 and 4 is equal to 2 to the power of 2. So now I have log 2 to the power of 3 over log 2 to the power of 2. Now I can move these exponents to the front. So now I have x is equal to 3 times log 2 over 2 times log 2. These two log 2's can cancel out, so I'll simply be left with x is equal to 3 over 2. So this is my answer. Alright, so for this problem, I have x is equal to x over 2. So I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, first start with x is equal to x over 2. Now I'm actually going to subtract x over 2 on both sides. So then these two x over 2's cancel out and now I'll be left with x minus x over 2 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So now I have x minus x over 2 times 2 is equal to 2 times 0. So for 2 times x minus x over 2, I'm simply going to distribute the 2 to all terms in my parentheses here. So first off, 2 times x, that's simply equal to 2x. And 2 times negative x over 2, the 2 simply cancel out, so all I'll be left with is negative x. And this is equal to 2 times 0, which is simply equal to 0. So I have 2x minus x is equal to 0. Now 2x minus x, that's simply equal to x. So I have x is equal to 0. So x equals 0 is my solution. Now I actually have a second method of solving this problem. So again, I first start off with x is equal to x over 2. And now this time, instead of subtracting x over 2 on both sides, I'm actually going to multiply 2 on both sides. So I have 2 times x is equal to x over 2 times 2. Well, 2 times x is simply equal to 2x. And x over 2 times 2, these two x 2s cancel out. So I'll simply be left with x. So I have 2x is equal to x. Now, I'm going to subtract x on both sides. These two cancel out. And I'll be left with 2x minus x, which is x is equal to, on my right hand side, I'll have 0. So x equals 0 again. So now to check, I have x is equal to x over 2. We know that x equals 0. So I have 0 is equal to 0 over 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. So I have 0 equals 0. And because this is right, my solution is right.